So, just a quick introduction about me and the session. My name's Joe Billingham. I work for a company called Purple Frog Systems, um, and we have a, another company, Power BI Sentinel. Today, I'll be talking to you about what data lineage is and why it's important. And then the second half will be about managing it and some of the tools you can use to, to do that. So because this is a 20 minute session, it's quite short, it flies by when you're up here, so I'll be taking questions towards the end if there's time, but because we've got to stand outside by the information desk, if you come and see me afterwards or talk to a member of the team with your questions, we'll be glad to answer them a bit later on. So quick run through of what we're going to get through. Um, we're going to talk about, like I said, what is data lineage and why should we even care about it? Um, some of the differences and specific nuances of data lineage where Power BI is concerned. Uh, how to monitor and keep an overall eye on data lineage within the Power BI service natively. And then as I mentioned, there are some external tools that can help you do that a bit better and we'll run through what they are and what you can do with those. So what is data lineage? and why should we care about it? Now, the, the almost dictionary definition of data lineage is the journey of data from its source all the way through to its endpoint and all the transformations it goes through in between. So the journey is important to understand for multiple different reasons. And this, this isn't Power BI specific, this is data lineage in general. Things you want to know about your data are, where does it come from? So, how do you know your data is reliable and fit for purpose if you don't know where it originated from? If you need to troubleshoot something, if the numbers at the end of the reporting level don't look correct, you need to know how the data got there to be able to go back and check all of those steps to make sure the correct processes are happening and there's no errors happening along the way. And then, of course, security teams we all know what they're like, we've dealt with them. They have concerns about where the data is exposed, who's got potential access to the data, and if possible, who's actually accessing the data, whose eyes are on it. So then, data lineage in Power BI. Power BI is a fantastic tool. It gives the businesses data freedom. The best thing about Power BI is that it's self-service. You push your information up to the cloud and everybody that needs to get their hands on it can get their hands on it. That is also the worst thing about Power BI. From a security and governance point of view, everybody's got their hands on it. Everybody can do what they want with it. It's very difficult to trace what's going on once that information hits the cloud. So some of the pros, like I said, it democratizes data. It puts the power of the data into the hands of the people reporting on it. It takes some of the pressure off some more of the, the technical developers because people can build their own reports with very little training. But then because these reports are being built by users who aren't as technical, you might have data quality issues. Uh, it's difficult to govern, like I said, who's got eyes on it and who hasn't, hence security risks. Now, uh, a quote I've heard a couple of times this week already is, data is the new oil. There is value in data. But there's no value in data if nobody's allowed to use it. And I, um, I spoke yesterday to two people just wandering around the conference hall. And one of them mentioned that their business is using an on-premises um, Power BI reporting service because their directors don't want to release control of data. They want to be able to know at all points where their data is being uh, shown to people, where it's being um, consumed, and who by. Now, that's not what Power BI is for. Power BI is freedom. You want to be able to give people that. And the way that you give them freedom is by being able to track all of those things, not control it, not stop people from having that freedom, but to see what they're doing with that freedom. That's why it's important to look after your governance and uh, your usage analysis. So how many companies grant users, end users, admin roles in workspaces? Sounds like a nightmare. It's the kind of thing where you're asking for trouble. But what if you could just click a button and see what those admins are doing with that data? 
suddenly you've got a reason to give them that freedom, let them do their work. Monitoring lineage, uh, excuse me, monitoring lineage, as well as usage metrics in Power BI, is important for this tracking. But it also lets you do things like manage adoption. You've bought 20 Power BI licenses and you've given them to 20 users. Three weeks later, you have a look at the metric data, and only five of them are logging in and using it. Then suddenly you've got another user who needs a license. You don't need to go and buy a license because you've got 15 that people aren't using. So you've either got a training gap where you need to train 15 people back up on Power BI, or you've got license allocations that you can reallocate rather than buying new ones. It's all about getting the staff trained to where they need to be or saving money. All important reasons for being able to look at that lineage. So you can monitor lineage and usage analysis in the Power BI service itself. Now I'm going to attempt to show you, hopefully, how that looks. So I don't have visibility on my screen of this, so bear with me. Um, this is a simple workspace we've got, that we've, we've, we've put up for the demo purposes. In the view here, there's a lineage view. So per workspace, you see your data sources, your data sets, your reports, and any apps that are built off them. It's valuable. It gives you some information. Go back to the list view. Now on the report itself, you click the ellipsis, and there's an option to generate some usage report statistics. Now this normally takes about a minute or so. I've got this one pre-cached. He says, unless there's no data in it. But you can see from the, the template on the screen that you get some very high level and basic usage data, who's opened the report, how many times, and you've got a good 30 day snapshot of what's going on. Again, it's better to have than not to have, but in terms of detail, there's so much more that we could request from this that we're just not getting from the service. So if I go back to the slides, and find my mouse, there we go. So not to take away from what the Power BI service gives us, it's valuable, it's useful, but like I say, there are some limitations to it. And the limitations, I just want to run through a couple of them. So you've got limited data. As I mentioned, you've got 30 days worth of usage analysis. Now, what happens if you want to look at adoption of financial reports? Financial reports are run once a month. How do you build a picture of how the increase in use is going up in that if you don't have anything further than a month's worth of data? It's quite narrow, and what I mean by that is if you want to look at the lineage of your estate, you go to the workspace, you look at the lineage. Then you go to the next workspace and look at the next lot of lineage. What if you've got a source system that's used in three or four workspaces and you want to see the commonality across that source? You'd have to go through every one, build your own picture, see what's going on. It's not very holistic. The customizations, I say limited, it's almost non-existent. So the lineage report is what it is. You load it, you look at it. The document, the, sorry, the analysis report, you can download that, you can change that. But again, the, the fields that you've got, you can't really add or take data away from it. It's more of a visual thing. It's not really customizable at all. And then the level of granularity. So on the lineage, you saw a server and a database and everything that follows on. But what part of that database is being used? What tables, what columns? From um, a developer's point of view, you want to go in and make changes to that data source. You're going to upset a lot of people unless you can guarantee that they're not using that to report on. So what can you do about it? There are tools out there that can help with this. The, you throw um, Power BI governance tool into Google and you get four or five hits right at the top. But the one people ask about more often than not is Microsoft Purview. Fantastic tool, absolutely brilliant at what it does. But what it does isn't always suitable for s small companies with Power BI estates they want to govern. It's like, I always try and equate it to hammering a nail in with a sledgehammer. A very expensive, difficult to buy sledgehammer. Um, companies don't always have the budget for purview. 
And even if you've got purview, the granularity of it, if you only want to focus on Power BI, it probably doesn't dig as deep as it could. So by all means, fantastic tool, but not specific enough for Power BI needs. So why are we here? What is Power BI Sentinel? How can it help you? So the three main headaches that people come to us with. Um, how big is our estate? That's one of them. Who's using premium workspaces? So we're paying for premium capacity. What's in there? Who's accessing it? We can, see we can see data in there, but is it stagnant? Is it being refreshed? Are people consuming it? Are we paying for this and not really getting our money's worth? And the, the favorite one, where's my report gone? So you've got a workspace with three or four admins. One goes in one morning and their report's gone and they say, can I have it back? And so, well, yes, providing you know somebody who's got a PBIX file sat on their desktop somewhere that can republish it for you otherwise. It's gone forever. So these are headaches that us ourselves as, as data consumers and managers had issues with. We decided to build a solution to help with all of those problems. As far as I'm aware, it's the only solution in the world that will do all three of these things as well as it does. There are products out there that do one or two of these things, but Power BI Sentinel is very... Uh, very robust and complete in anything you need to do regarding governance. So what is the product? The product is a software as a service product, sits up in the cloud. Um, it's a web portal that you log into, you run through your configuration, you choose what to include and exclude from the, uh, from the, the lineage run. So we don't consume everything, we only consume what you ask us to consume. And then there's a suite of Power BI template reports that we furnish you with to allow you to consume your own data. So the way Power BI Sentinel works is we process your data and give it you back. It doesn't sit with us, it sits with you. We put your data back in your hands in a reportable and consumable way. So if you remember this slide from a few back, we've got some limitations. Well, here's what Power BI does to get around those limitations. We had the limited data issue, your 30-day snapshot. Because we write your data back to you, the snapshot is more of a story. The story lasts as long as your retention policy lasts. In your environment, you'll have an Azure SQL DB. I think we've got data in ours going back at least three years. So again, if you want to take the example of financial reports, if you've got, if you want to build a picture of month on month rather than day by day, you've got that filter ability of being able to extend that out and see over time what my capacity is like, who's using what, what's my usage adoption like. But because you've got that longer picture, not only can you see backwards what's going on and who's doing what, you can project forwards. How many licenses am I going to need? How much premium capacity am I going to need going forwards? Rather than waiting for it to become a problem, you can forecast it and get ready, prepare, and not run into those issues. The narrow view. So Power BI Sentinel has a function where you can click a report like you could in the service. You can look at its lineage and it will show you the server and the database, the report and data set, apps and dashboards that are built off it, exactly what we want to see. You can also just click on a data source and it will show you every workspace, report, data set and app. You can click on a report or an app or a data set and you can see backwards all of the sources that feed it. Gives you more of a holistic picture and then further to that, the documentation goes down to a table level, so you can see which tables in those data sources are actively being used in the report. If your report is sitting in a premium workspace, you can actually see which columns are being used in that report. So you put this in the hands of a data developer, 
they can start deleting columns away from data sets and tidying things up knowing that people aren't using them. And you're not going to get those five o'clock Friday afternoon last minute report readers sending you emails because all of their reports are broken and their data's disappeared. It gives you the confidence to be able to, um, to make decisions without affecting people. The limited customization now showed a couple of report templates that we give you. Those report templates are a best fit. So there's a, a lineage template and a usage template. You can audit absolutely everything that everyone's doing in the system. You can filter that through workspaces, objects in the tenant, people to see what individual people are doing, the time frames there, like I said, for as long as you need it. Now what that means is you've got a picture of the source material. You've got everything through to apps and dashboards. You've got lineage that shows you permissions of who's got access to what. So you've got your potential data consumers. And then you've got your usage analysis report that tells you which users are looking at which reports and when. So you've got a full picture of data source to physical sets of eyes on the data itself. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we all have to deal with security officers and, and, and um, data security people. Now you go to them with this full picture of, this is where my data started, and this is who looked at it last, gold mine. As far as customization is concerned, the fields that we expose, there's so many to choose from. The slices that are on there, like I say, are best fit, but they're all interchangeable. But the best part is because we put the data back in your environment, you can enrich it. You can bolt your own data model onto it. For example, we tell you who's got permissions to what. We don't look at Active Directory. So it just reports a group name. You can bolt in an Active Directory table that nobody else ever has to see because the data is in your tenant and blow out those permissions to see exactly who's got permission. The, the possibilities with it are endless once you've got the reports. And then the limited granularity, as I mentioned, for premium workspaces, we can show you on a column level lineage what's going on with the data, who's seeing what, where, and why. So I see we've got a question on the screen. Does Power BI Sentinel have access to the data? How is data protection guaranteed? Uh, it's a complicated question to answer because there are various ways we do things. Um, the basic answer is we're a data processor. We don't store your data. It never sits on our environment in a readable format. So it comes through us. We process it. We store the metadata about your environment. So in the portal online, we can present it back to you. Uh, documentation, workspace names, report names, how it all links up, but no PII data, nothing with any business data in it, nothing critical. All of that is pushed back through to an Azure storage account and an Azure SQL DB that sits in your environment and you are your own data owner. Um, as far as how protection is guaranteed, there are various security protocols in place for those data streams to make sure that they're not intercepted. Um, and the company itself is ISO 27001 certified. We've passed all the checks. If you want to know any more, please get in touch with the team. They'll talk you through individual cases. So that was data lineage and its importance in a nutshell. How you manage it, some options, us being one of them. If you want any more information about us or the product or just want to talk data in general, we've got a stand over by the information desk. Can't miss us, bright yellow. We've also got a Dungeons and Dragons game with some prizes, so come and take part, come and have a chat. Um, we're here until the end of the conference on Saturday. On the screen, you've got my socials. If you want to get in touch, please scan the QR code and leave some feedback. Um, help me get better at this. Heaven knows I need the practice. Thank you again, and if you've got any questions, like I say, come and see me later. Thanks for your time.